Hi again, and welcome back to another example. Uh, we are going to continue with our invoice example today. And uh, I have flushed out the different objects that we worked on just, uh, last time. And uh, these objects uh, now have uh, some uh, working uh, parsing of uh, the different JSON object that we gave the constructors. And in this case, I have uh, the address object open here and I get a JSON address, I check if there is a name in the address and if that name is of the type JSON object, if that and I get the JSON name object, create that over here. And uh, then I take each path, uh, each different uh, path, part of this uh, name tag in our document. If you look in this address document, we have in the build to address, we have a name property with title, first name and last name. So I pick those up and I put them into each of the setters of this uh, class. And I have built setters and getters for all uh, classes that could take a string. Because if you look in our document, everything is denoted as strings everywhere. Uh, you could actually have some parts of the document that I could be a number. So uh, valid JSON would be to write it like this, probably not with a, with the comma inside of it, but nevertheless, uh, that's um, okay notation to have. And then when you parse it, you will actually get different objects back because uh, this simple JSON uh, package that we use, it, it takes everything in the JSON document and creates a structure with a map. And maps are uh, save some kind of objects in them. And this is the most rudimentary kind of map. So everything in this map is of type object and then it actually saves different kind of uh, objects depending on what's in the document. So if there's a string, the value will be a string. If it's an integer uh, or a simple value, uh, not a floating value, then then it will be a long because it uh, they took the largest uh, variants you could get as much uh, different numbers as possible, a, a large range of numbers. And if it's floating point, then you will get a double back, or the object created will be a double. If it's this kind of structure, it will create a JSON object in the map. In the map. And if we have uh, this kind of structure where you have a list of many items, then it will create a JSON array. And all these different objects actually extends the uh, simple object class and therefore could be saved in the same map with a key value pair. So you have a key of a string type and a value could be any of those value types that I explained here. So in our case, when we get our values back, back, we get a simple object. So we can't just put this object into a setter. We have to cast it to something. And in this case, we know that everything is strings. So we set strings to our functions. If we take an example of the invoice header, then we have a date and a string here. And then we actually have a a setter that takes a string and then parses it over to date. So we have separated the con concerns of actually parsing the document and um, getting the, the right version of the information from the document because in the document we have saved the value as a string. So we will take it out as a string and cast it to a string and then put it into a setter 
that could take any type. We have also have the setter for date, but in this case, we take the string setter and parse it here. We could actually have a setter that takes object as well and then figure out what kind of object we get. And then we don't have this cost here. In, in that case, we could have guards to see, see that we actually get valid data. But in our case, we skip some of these steps because they are not important and we have to rely that the document that we get it has some sort of uh, simple structure to it. Uh, but you could do this much more uh, robust if you have that kind of structure in here. Um, so in this case, if we just as an example, we could have invoice date, and this could take an object, for instance, and then we could check if this invoice date is an instance of string, then we will do what we did up here. We will just send it on to the um, state and we put that cost to the string setter. And then we can have the same function but checking for date and then put a straight date object in there. And as many of these checks as we want just to get, make it more robust and actually read the data if we can read the data. But I didn't uh, really bother with this kind of fine grain tuning that you could do. Uh, so we, we have this header class and in the invoice row we will handle the double and de uh, big decimal value the, the same way. Uh, the difference with the big decimal is that you take this and put into the constructor of the big, big decimal either a string or a double or uh, any other value that you could parse to a big decimal and then it will create this object. And in the double case we just use the parse double function. And so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, this is what I have done since last time we, we coded this. And uh, so for this session I, I thought we should continue to actually create a PDF document. And I have uh, looked into some examples. So if we go over to our web browser here, uh, here we have an example page um, at the PDF box uh, web page. They actually say that if you want to have an example, then you will have to, you can go back and see here. So on the PDF box homepage, in the example section, examples, uh, they have an, an information that you look should look in their SVN repository for examples. And in this directory, we have different maps, uh, map structure with different kind of things you can do with the PDF box. You could build a new model and create documents. You could uh, print documents, you could render documents to images, sign them, you have some util functions, you could search the document. Um, don't really know what uh, the interactive part is, if that's uh, a viewing part perhaps, and then they have some ant uh, for doing uh, different operations on, on your document. But in our case, we will create a new document, so we, then we go into this PD model, and in the PD model case here we have a lot of different things you could do when you create a document. You could uh, create a PDF of an image. You could do this Hello World example where you actually just type some text to the PDF and they have a few different examples. So you can use true type fonts and you can use type one fonts to create your document or you could use the inline standard fonts that come with the PDF box. And we will use this example today to, to uh, uh, 
uh, actually display some text in the document um, because those fonts will serve our purpose. But if you want to do your design much nicer, you can uh, look up some other fonts and use. The, the big thing to know about fonts when you use fonts is that every all, all fonts are not free. Some fonts actually come with a license to them and you have to pay to use that font. So that is a good thing to keep in mind when you are working with fonts. And uh, then we have this example up here that you could add an image to a PDF. We will use that today as well because we want to put a logo on in our PDF. And I also looked a bit at uh, create a blank PDF, uh, but um, just just to see how how that looked. But I think uh, this Hello World example should be a good starting point. So in this uh, Hello World example, we have a main method where they take in some arguments and uh, look at what the file name should be and what the message should be. And then they create a document, they create a page, they add the page to the document, and then they take a standard uh, type 1 font, Helvetica Bold, and create the content stream. Uh, and that's where all the contents of a specific page actually is. So everything in a PDF document is streamed as a long stream of text. So you could uh, read a PDF document or a PDF page stream. Uh, some cases they are compressed, but in some cases you can only you could open up the PDF document and read it as text if you could interpret it. Um, and then you do some operations here where you will begin typing text, setting a font, adding a line offset so you know where you place the text. You actually set the text with this show text, end the line and then close the content stream and save the document to a file. So let's um, just uh, copy some of this uh, document over to our example uh, so we can uh, start working with this. See here if we can uh, see if we can get it in raw. Perhaps this is the raw text, so we need some imports here. We can put those in our document here. And then we have this, all these PDF, uh, PD model objects. And uh, to go back here, we could pick up some of this main code here. And uh, we put that after here just to to try it out, see if we can we can create a document that uh, has a Hello World message in it. And of course, the the last part that I forgot to mention is that it's really important to close documents when you work with them. So you create a document outside of the try um, block, and then before if there is an error in this uh, code, then you always will run this uh, this uh, statement after or in the finally block. So this statement will always run, even when there are, are any errors in here. Or if this doesn't generate any errors, this finally block will also execute. So after all this is done, the document must be closed. And uh, as we have um, a try up here, I think we will move our code a bit so we can clean it up. So we use a simple try and then we set our final after the catch statement. So in Java, you first start a try block where you expect that it could ha uh, have an exception. And then you have a one or more catch blocks where the lowest or the least uh, defined should be last. So in our case, exception is the 
the small the 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 class that all other uh, exceptions are extending so we will catch everything with exception throwables should never be catched because then we will catch runtime exceptions as well and those we don't want to catch then we want the jvm to actually crash because those could be out of memory errors and so on so those you don't want to have any code running after you get one of those but uh, in in case of a, an exception we will catch all type of exceptions we could have another uh, catch statement here that is more fine grain so for instance we could check for a null pointer exception here an mp and if a null pointer exception handle then we could do something else here and if it's a null pointer we will do the thing in this catch statement but if not it will actually move over and do what's in this uh, block so that's quite handy to work with um, so here we have our document we will save it to a file name just for our example I think in, uh, single invoice PDF should suffice as a simple name our message well when you do an hello world you always have to use hello world right um, so that should be everything that we need to do to use this example and if if we have understood this code correctly we will use the helvetica bold to type hello world at position 100 in from the side and 700 up from the bottom because the pdf documents y-axis actually starts from origo or both y and x and y coordinates starts from origo so you go 100 in the x-axis from origo and then you go up 700 from origo um, to uh, display something further up the page and then we say that we want a font with 12 points uh, size so this should be uh, interesting let's see what uh, this will generate so we do nbm package and it will build it we actually got some errors here so let's see what errors we got um, suitable construction okay it seems that we have a, a, a bit of a naming uh, conflict here because we use doc as uh, our json object as well when we read the json so this should have a different name i think we should call this uh, json doc and so we could distinguish between the PDF document so uh, we don't get those mixed up we could call this uh, PDF page as well to be more specific about um, what we are doing see here i think that were all the places so let's go back and build this and then we will probably pass no have i some cannot find symbol see here uh, online 48 variable doc so it was probably somewhere there that where i didn't change uh, yeah the close statement of course so uh, compiler is really good to give you hints about what things you miss and so on uh, io exception must be caught or declared to be thrown okay so we have app 
and Java IO exception. Well, that should be caught, I guess, because line 48. Oh, this thing again. Mm. This is quite irritating with the uh, with uh, the close statement when you're working with files because files when you close them could, could actually generate an IO exception so you have to put these in a catch st statement as well and uh, this makes for pretty ugly code ex uh, especially if you have multiple documents that you want to close because then you might have a finally and you say I want to close this document and then you have to have a finally and another document that you want to close and so on so those could be those uh, kind of passes where you have multiple documents open could be quite ugly and people have done some interesting workarounds for those where you say that I would like to do a silent close and that's pretty much you do a try with an empty finally um, but I don't know if that's the, be the best way to go around those but uh, it, it's a bit Weird that close couldn't be defined any other way that it don't throws and exceptions. But I digress. Let's go back and compile this. So now we shouldn't have any errors. Right. Here we go. So now if we run our new invoice jar file, we get some... Uh, log exceptions from uh, the PDF doc uh, module and it uh, tells us that it loaded a disk cache, new found fonts were found, it builds an on disk font cache and it's fi finished on building this disk cache. So uh, I wonder if we run it again if we don't get those. Okay, so I wonder where it put that disk cache but I guess it's have a, a way to save that information but so it actually created 272 fonts that we could use and we have our single uh, document page here so let's look at it see how it uh, actually yeah that seems pretty nice right created a hello world so uh, Let's continue. We see here if we have uh, our example. Uh, we should have a logo, we should have a company name and the address information underneath. So let's uh, start by uh, setting a logo at, uh, in the document. And then we go back to our example here and see... Uh, back and look at these add an image to the PDF then we need a few more we need uh, we can go to this uh, raw version we need the append mode and paired image object um, that's the PD image x object is the object that you put into your stream this append mode it's uh, if you want to open a document after you have uh, closed it and saved it on disk but, uh, but in our case we don't want to load the file and open a specific page and put an image on it we want to draw an image on an uh, in our content stream as it is so uh, we don't require all this code we, we need this image object import so we put that in first and uh, then we need see here we need to just have these 
where we create the image and where we uh, put it on screen. So yeah, I think that should be everything. So we go down, down here where we have our content stream. We put in those rows. Here we say that we want the scale of one, one to one. It's not what I actually want. I think I will uh, try to scale the image uh, with how large it is. Try to scale it to the actual width or height that I want it. But uh, I have an image path here. So uh, this path is logo PNG. Uh, that's a PNG in image I fetched from Google Image earlier. See here, we don't want that. We want the PDF document. So you need to pass the document to uh, to the um, constructor of the image so it knows where to put the image because this function will actually create a specific image file inside of the document uh, in a separate place than the stream and then we draw the image on the stream with a specific um, set of commands and that set of commands will uh, put a reference to the actual image that we created in our resources bank. So let's see here, we have a scale of one. That's not what I want. I want, let's say scale of width and say that uh, if I want, my width to be, let's say, 200 pixels. Then I, if I actually scale, so I will say that this is 200 pixels, the width is 200 pixels, and then I get a scale value that I will scale my height width. If I'm not incorrectly, if I don't think, if I don't uh, have my numbers wrong here. And I think still that we need to specify this in from Origo. So we put it at the same place as the text, but we put the text at 400 perhaps we put that further into the page so um, this should create uh, i think the name of content stream is better but for brevity we go with to say content um so this should be everything we need to do to actually create an image in the document so let's try this Compiling. See here. Nope, we didn't get an image. So let's go back then and put it where they first. Let's see, so I actually have this logo up again. Yeah, that was the correct name. Mm. Okay, I think I'm a bit stupid here. Uh, let's turn back the clock here a bit. I guess you already saw it that I didn't actually run the command to create the document. I just looked at it. Uh, but still, we don't have an image here. So now we have actually created a change. So let's put it at... 20, see if that's um, a better position. Still nothing on screen. So let's go back to the documentation here. Look at PDF 
box and then we have a pd image x object class see here i guess no we don't want to look at that we want to look at the uh, box uh, pd Content stream, Let's see what, what was it called? Page content stream, yeah. Page content stream. Let's see here what we have done wrong. And draw image. So we should put uh, it's this function that we use. Uh, that was helpful. Draw an image as the x, y coordinates with a given size, height, width. Okay, so to make this simple, we say that we want something that is 200 wide, 200, and at 2020. Just so we see that we have to build it first. So Often you have to debug these functions to actually see what um, what the document says. Okay, so it's still from Origo. Here we have my example logo um, uh, found on Google Images. So that means my, that my math is wrong. You can't do a scale with... Um, just dividing by 200 and then thought that should be okay maybe i it's required that that's a floating value perhaps um, because when you java has some um, strange behavior that when you have an int value that you uh, divide by the result will be an int value but if both values are float you actually get a float that was the, the wrong part so it's very important when you are trying to create small numbers or something that you want to have as a floating point value of the, the div division that both side of the division is actually a floating value because if any of them is a long or int or anything, then this value will be, uh, be it will be rounded to the nearest integer, and that's not what you want. So let's uh, go here again and uh, go up uh, with our image, put it further up. And we will create it. So now we put it up there. Still a um, quite long in far inside of the document. So I guess we if we put it at fifty, we keep it. Now we will. Uh, actually see here we can uh, static no uh, final float um, with put it 100 and then we uh, use the width here and here and this is a final float here. So this is a way to indicate to the compiler that we create a floating value here and use it later. But this, after this assignment, the float val value will never change. And that could uh, give the compiler some hints that it could make this uh, much more eff effective code. It's not that important right now, but when you create a static value, it's really nice to put it as final. It's, it's a good habit to get into that 
um, static values always should have or should be final. So let's see here. Now that uh, logo seems a bit more reasonable, if we go back to our example over here. It's a bit further in, but I think that that margin is quite nice as well. So then we will just put our text at 160, uh, 700 should be fine, and we will bump this up to 20 points, and call this uh, sample ink. Build our function again. And run it. Then we get. Okay, so I, I'm getting the value in the Okay, so the image is written upside down and also the text. So all the, yeah, that, that, that's actually quite, quite reasonable. Um, yeah, so every, everything goes from Origo. So of course the image all, or the text also goes from Origo. So if you uh, write the text here, then it will push uh, your text so it will write the E on the line that you specified at 700, for instance. So that means that we have to bump this up. And I think we could bump that up as well a bit to uh, align them in the top instead. So let's say that this is about... 36 pixels or 30 pixels high, then we have to put it at 770 and we want the logo to be a bit further up. So we can say that we push it 50 pixels up, then we have to push this 50 pixels up as well. So that's at that position. So let's see if, uh, if this looks better. Let's see here. Of course, I have to run it as well. Should never forget that. I think we went a bit far. <laughs> 50 pixels or 50 points, that's a lot. So let's go down a bit, 20 points. And that means that 30 points were also much. So I think we also need to say that this should be at, uh, see here. The image is 100 points wide. So I guess that it's about 40 points high then. So if we push this 20, we should end up in a better position. Yeah, this could be a bit tricky to uh, figure out where to place things um, when you're working from Origo. That seems a bit more reasonable. Um, I think that we should go... I think that logo is still too large. Really too large. Um, so I guess that uh, our company... Uh, 
name will be a bit larger than the image. And uh, see here, 60 points wide. So then we will put this at 50. 60, 120, I guess. And we go down a bit here, so we put it at 16 points. Still seems very large to me. Yeah, that's pretty much okay. So let's do some more lines here and uh, we will change the font first to let's say 10 points. Let's go even further and say eight. And then we will uh, add our address. So we'll see here. Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna figure out a address while uh, while we are looking at this because figuring out stuff is hard. So let's uh, just push this down 20 points and say street address. And we want one more line and two more lines. We want this uh, 10 points further down and the last 10 points more down. We say uh, this is, let's see, go back to the example. We put in city, country, county, country. Put a zip code there as well, and then we have the phone number and, and we example com. We can say that our phone number should be one five five. Five six five six five seven five seven. Let's say, and zip code could be uh, something like that. Let's see that we are in the states, perhaps. Uh, we could have New York, and if I'm not misinformed, New York is inside New York, and. Um, but I'm not from U the USA, so I and I haven't never been, so I don't know. And we can call this uh, Main Street Block 15 uh, First Floor or something. Um. I don't know if uh, that's a correct address, but it should suffice for our example, so it's not just blank text. We'll see here, if we get this aligned, oh, wrong one, here we have it, no text. That's no good. Ah, of course. Um, so we have begin text and end text. I wonder if you need to have it for each line. You might need that, then we have to make a, a helper function for this later on, because this this is really ugly code. But let's get, get this working and then look into making some helper functions to create a nice workflow for us.
in the next episode. See here. Yay! We got the address and we have our example link. I think this is uh, pretty much what I plan to do today. Um, to design the first part of uh, our uh, header information. I hope that you uh, learned something in this episode or uh, found it interesting. Please uh, share this with your friends, uh, give it a like, give me a nice comment if you want me to change anything or if you uh, want to discuss any code with me and uh, if you want more of this content, please uh, subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video.